Hey there, welcome to a video where I'm going to show you how to do top-down animations and a idle state. That's all. There will not be a part two. Maybe. I don't... probably not. Okay, so usually kids will post stupid shit where it's like, How do I do this? And most of the times I see comments telling them to do it based off the key presses. This is stupid. Don't do this. If you're gonna do this by yourself, don't use the keys. Just watch the video. It'll take like a minute. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is start a new GDevelop project. You're going to want to make external codes or whatever they're called. And this is where you're going to put your movement code. And then you're going to have another one. And this will be for your camera. Something you're also going to want to make sure you do is link your external code. I usually forget to do this. And yeah, just make sure you do this. We're also going to set up your character sprite. Your character sprite is your player. Yeah. You're going to want to make sure you import your run animations for every single direction that you're going to do. You're also going to want to make sure you import your idle animations for every one that you do. Now what you're going to want to do is make sure that every animation is looping. Another thing you're going to want to do is set up a top-down character. I'm not going to be doing anything cool like accelerating animations or anything like that. If you want to do that, that's all up to you. I really don't care. Basically what you're going to want to do is change the acceleration to 800. You can change the speed to whatever. I did 120. You're also going to want to make sure that you remove this rotation option. Um, if you don't turn it off, it will do this, which is pretty cool. You might want to use this for another game, like those weird zombie games. But anyway, since you're probably here to make like Earthbound 5, you're probably just going to want to remove it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is edit the external camera code. At the beginning of the scene, we're going to change the camera zoom. And since my pixel art is 32 by 32, we're going to zoom it in by 4. Depending on how big your pixel art is, you're going to want to change the zoom. I recommend having images that are smaller than 500. I don't know why you would need an image that is... 500 by 500, but it's your game. GDevelop is not going to be able to handle a bunch of 500 width sprites on screen, so I recommend having a bunch of smaller sprites. Now that we figured out our zoom on the camera, we're going to want to make sure our camera follows the player. What we're going to want to do is change the player's X position to the player's center X position. We're also going to want to change the center Y position to the center Y position of the player. Now that we've set this up, the camera should follow us. You may want to change it later in the future. That's why this is an external event. You might have cutscenes where you're going to want the camera to be somewhere else than the player. Then what you can do is put this code in. You're going to be checking if the object is moving in a certain direction. If it's moving in this direction, it'll display an animation. That is all it does. If you're wondering how we're going to get the West animations, because we only imported five animations, you can do this cool feature called Flip. Put this on every single animation. The only ones that are going to flip are going to be the ones that are Northeast, Southeast, and East. North and South do not need to flip. Unless you want them to, but I don't think they need to. It's up to you, whatever. Okay, so now all of the animations should be working. You can walk in all eight directions. If you want it to be four directions, you can do the same exact thing just by changing the animations to be like northeast and southeast would equal east or north or south or whatever the fuck you want to make it. Great, now we're going to want to make a idle state. What we're going to do is... <sighs> we're not going to yawn. What we're going to do is check if your object is walking Okay, your object shouldn't be walking. A global variable, it doesn't need to be global. I'm doing it because it's easier. This variable will be a number variable and it will contain your direction. Now you're going to want to make sure that every time you're walking in a certain direction, it will change the global variable to the number that is equal to a direction, if that makes sense. I hope that does. Hopefully there's visuals on screen, unless I'm too lazy to do it. Now what we're going to do is check if the player is not moving. If the player is not moving, 
what we're gonna do is check the global variable and then it will display the correct idle state. Boom, now you should have a working idle state. This is awesome, congratulations. You can make an RPG now. Comment anything you have questions on and subscribe. Yeah.